Hi everyone, it's Desiree here from Desiree Creates. Welcome. I have a bit of a cold, so please excuse me. As you may have noticed, my few videos that I've done, I haven't been well. But I'm fine. I'm going to be painting a little adventure I had the other day as we had to live trap a skunk and relocate it as there was one living underneath one of our structures here at the farm and our dog obviously the curious being that they are kept going around in that area which we clearly do not want him sprayed or us you know accidentally startling the poor creature and getting sprayed ourselves as they do have very poor eyesight but great hearing and and sense of smell um, their habitats are woodlands, fields, abandoned animal dens, hollow logs, and rock structures. Predators are owls, hawks, and other birds of prey, coyotes, foxes. And their food is primarily an insectivore, so they eat a ton of like insects, larvae, scrubs, you know, but they'll eat mice, eggs, chicks, fruits, and veggies. I've heard that they do become a pest if you do have chickens. So, um, yeah, I'm going to be using my A Gallo watercolors. I have the, um, the natural collection here. Let's see if I can zoom out just a bit more. I have kind of already did a swatch on this, but I'm going to be doing a swatch with the full collection in another video on a better quality paper. This is okay. Um, this is a 140 pound cold pressed watercolor paper. This is in my um, Amosri sketchbook. And what I did is I just took some Versafine Onyx Black ink and stamped in my little squares, colored them in. If you notice these little dots, it's because um, these little dots represent the doubled colors from this collection that's in their 48 set. But anyhow. I am kind of deciding on which stamp block to use. And I'm kind of liking this bold one here to um, write in my striped skunk. But maybe I'll just do that last and just carry on with, with some painting. I'll be using a number two Tintoretto Synthetico, their new Tintoretto Gold, the 1328 series. I tend to paint a lot in the um, in number six, and here's a number two. I probably should break out the number four. As a six might be too big, but we shall see. So what I'm going to be playing around with is most likely some of the green earth colors here. I think I should use the green earth cool. And a bit of the green earth warm. Let's see if I can get in a little bit closer. just so that I can uh, paint in some plant structures that I do have here. I'll probably add some rich green gold to bring out a little bit more of a yellowy color in the leaves, which is always a fun a fun color to have. And now I'm using the green earth warm. And 
and the green earth pool. Oh boy, did that ever go down. Super vibrant. I should have made that one a little bit more muted, but that green gold definitely brightens up the colors in the palette here. And I'm going to be using some lapis because I have little dark berries and some indigo genuine. As we have, um, I'm not even too sure what kind of berries there are here at the farm. Growing on some of the bushes in the yard. But yeah, we don't eat anything because we have no clue what they are whatsoever. I know our dog ate one one day and uh, he got very, very ill last summer. So that was not a fun experience for any of us because of course we were definitely worried. Um, maybe I will swatch around some sort of like blue sky, I think, using a zirconium blue. Just to tint around. So right here, I'm just going around some of the lettering, just adding some sky blue color around the critter in zirconium blue. Maybe I'll add a little bit underneath. And let's go use some slate gray. This is a very, very light gray which is nice as um oops as an undertone color I would say if you're kind of just learning uh, and playing about a lot of these paints are can be easily mixed or and lifted so you know even if say you were to have a little bit of an error that would be all right I am just going to mix in a little bit of Roman black earth as you can see it's made it quite dark in some areas here but that's okay um, Just so happens to be a color that I was looking for. I'm probably going to warm this up just a teeny bit with some burnt umber brownish here. So I'm trying to make a land structure. And then I'll just go back in with, with pen. I have a little bit of buff titanium on my brush. I'm going to add 
put that up here. Kind of looking to to make it kind of like some sort of like rock, rock or ground structure here where these um plants are growing. And as for my skunk, I've never really actually painted one of these before, but I'm going to wet around an area and see if I can get it to bloom and bleed in a way that I want it to. So, I don't know if I should just use a little bit of indigo to give it some, some color. And then I'll add in some, some black. Just trying to make it all jagged. And I might have to do this in layers. So you can see I'm taking the point of my brush and trying to make a mimic fur. And this is a wet on wet technique that I'm using and hopefully it's uh, working out with blooming or dispersing. Now the one in my property had a little bit of a off-white to him, so I don't know if I'm going to have to mimic that, but I'm definitely going to water down my black or probably be safer to go with the gray or the buff titanium um, just to mimic a little bit of a shadow because he did have like a very, very fluffy tail. He had a crazy fluffy tail. They are really, really quite cute. They also love to go through people's garbage. And also due to that, it's a possibility that, you know, if the creature did have any kind of rabies, which hopefully did not, obviously we don't want our fur babies getting bitten by, by these little creatures. I'm just going to use some indigo for his nose and I will definitely use that. I probably should use a smaller brush as it is quite a bit finer for his eyes. And maybe 
maybe a bit around the ears. I think if you ever want your watercolor work, I guess, to be a little bit more interesting or you're trying to separate a color. Indigo is not a bad way to go. Um, they have very long claws as they are excellent diggers. So if you ever find like patches of dirt around, most likely these little guys here are the, your culprit. I'm not really good at the drawing fluff. But this zigzag pattern I'm sure will not hurt. And I'm sure I can always blend that out. Now they do have a white stripe on their face. So I'm going to try to paint around I don't know if you can see there's quite a little bit of a tint around my brush. I'm going to avoid his eye area right now because the eyes are very, very wet. Usually people like to paint in layers and I can get very impatient. So I'm going to try my best to see if I can uh, paint around. Got some black here. So it could get pretty pretty dark if I wanted to Just trying to make a <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> to me, he's starting to look more like a badger. Gonna paint around the eyes. That's probably why he's looking like a badger. I got a white stripe there, and he's got cute little ears. And he has a little bit of a white fur from the back of his head. So let's see if this will work out. They do have a little bit of a, a long snout. Now what I have kind of going on over here 
as I have little mushrooms. Let's use some Jerosite and mix in some yellow. Hmm. Now I think I'll just paint this in with a little bit of a grayish color. I know it's just kind of all blending into the background right now, but that's all right because I'm just gonna end up dropping in some color anyhow and not changing that around. Here, I haven't really spotted any reddish or orange mushrooms. It doesn't mean that I can't add a little bit of that color to the top of these. So I'm using the Ercolano Red, just for the top of the mushrooms. And maybe I'll use some raw sienna. Make it kind of a little bit more yellowy, I guess you can say. Definitely come back in here with a little bit of this brown. And this gray. And then just kind of carve out my my mushrooms. Now I understand this may bleed into there, which is fine. There's nothing that's really going to bother me too too much. I have another mushroom at the top here. Which I'm using buff, buff titanium, cherosite, and and the um, Ercolano red or Ecolano. How do you pronounce this? I don't know. Sorry if I'm butchering the name. So I'm just basically trying to make some sort of rock formation here in front of the creature, like a kind of like a tree stump. So I'm painting it upwards. I'm in this area here. I am probably going to add more water, pick up some of this black, and just kind of keep going. Oh, this is turning out quite beautifully, actually. I'm going to add some more indigo down here. I have this front paw has more indigo in it. Probably should have put that in the back. But I didn't mind that too, too much. Oh, I'm missing your paw prints. So when you're patient, you can always try adding and darkening the color slowly. To bring out more of what you are trying to do here. Like I'm trying to bring out his front paw. I 
see if I can like try to bring out his leg a little. His eyes are dry. So I'll probably try to bring out his face quite a bit more. More around the eyes. And his ears. Now, they do not have pink ears. But you know it is your own artwork and you can always add that in for fun i'm just gonna put some gray it's okay to leave some white spots as it kind of gives it more of a realistic uh feature to it i'm just adding some small squiggly lines i don't know i should zoom in more if you guys can see its tail but it's just a very very light color in what I'm doing I am going to go in some with some Merlot which is a darker darker kind of very strong opaque burgundy reddish color or like a dark wine I'm just going to go to the bottom of these mushrooms here. Maybe I'll add add some dots. I'm going to bring in some of this some of this Roman black earth with some burnt umber brownish and I'm just gonna go over these plant stems here and a little bit underneath some of the leaves and I don't know if I should go back in with some let's use some warm green earth as that can't be the only thing that has green up in there and let's add some little mossy patches to this structure here I guess I'm out of frame. Sorry, guys. And let's see. I'm going to go get my stamp set. ST. Where did the R go? P. E. D. Striped. So I'm grabbing my versus fine ink. And just hold down the ink locks just for like a couple of seconds there to hopefully get a nice crisp crisp uh, marking T If you do it too quickly, you see how it's kind of um very patchy there. It's 
So when you hold it down, it gives the ink a little bit more time to get absorbed into the paper and it gives you a crisper look. Right now we gotta go spell the word skunk. It's and I just realized if I made it a little bit more wonky. It would have added a, quite a bit more character to it, but so let's try it out. There we go. See how it's a fun angle. There we go. Um, hmm. I believe the leaves are pretty dry, which I'm going to go back in with my rare green earth. That is the darkest green I have in this palette. I guess I could mix it with a little bit of indigo blue to make it a little bit darker. a greenish blue tint I probably should be using most definitely be using my smaller paint brush and I'm probably just gonna go see if um oh I think I will have to come in with a uh, finer fine line marker I kind of made like a bluish tint there but that's okay I should have separated this a little bit better but I am very very happy with how this turned out and if you don't have a ruler, just use little templates lying around. And sometimes this is what I do. I'm going to grab my number five. No, number three would work better. I'm just grabbing a stencil as I have my A Gallo Natural Collection here. Sometimes I'll make a mini border, but I will just cross it off like this. And it just kind of finishes that. And as for this one here, I think I'm going to use my number five because it's thicker when it comes to the rare earth pigments or, you know, anything else. My rulers tend to go missing all the time here. But I am going to just do a quick little... Dash marks, like a little block, and have them all kind of end up all in the same place, which is great. my number two 
I don't know. I think my number one. Oh, maybe number one would probably be better than a number two. And I'm just going to go in here in my plants and just add the veins or the leaves, which is not like a bad thing. You don't have to do this. I don't know if you can see. It may look like I'm butchering it. But, um... It's always best, like, say, if you don't do, like, a solid line and just kind of, like, make your lines a little bit broken. It can make it look more realistic. I sometimes, um, these black markers are very, very heavy, in a sense. See, like, here, it can just make it look like... Some sort of rock line. A rock vein. And, ooh, for the life of me, where did my white marker go? So we can see if this um, jelly roll works. To add a little bit of color to his nose, the eye, around the eye. Highlights any any spots you may want to highlight a little bit. Like obviously, I wanted to separate his leg here, so. out and maybe go around the mushrooms sorry you if I keep going out of screen. It's okay to add like little tufts of grass. So that can help out your artwork. There we go. I don't know if I really want to touch the skunk or just leave it as is. I'm just going to draw a little kind of border with some dots here just so I can separate. pigment information from the actual quote. I think I'm quite happy with this. Now yep, that didn't lift anything. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. I just thought I'd give it a try. I am going to go in and bring in... Ooh, I forgot I had that blue in there. Whoops, that's okay. I will just use it to my advantage. I'm just going to go back in and bring in some more of that zirconia. But it's still wet, so I can just dab it out, clean out my brush. Mix in the zirconia blue here. Probably a little bit too much blue, but that's okay. It should lighten up. Maybe we'll 
bit more of a color down here, just underneath his belly and around his tail. So if you just don't want like um, it to look like a blob with like a hard edge, you can just slightly wet all the way around like you're making a border with the water while it's still wet and hopefully don't make any large puddles and then hopefully it'll just kind of bloom and disperse spread out on its own so you don't have like a crazy... Crazy, crazy thick line like a watercolor, unless you want that. And I'm gonna add a little bit more blue. Sorry, here. Try to mix that in. I think some around the plants. Let's add some water there first. Very watered down. Around here needs a little bit of a blue sky. Oops, recording the ceiling. I'm trying to zoom in. And there we have it. My striped skunk portrait for my, my memory of yesterday. I may or may not add the um, date here. Would probably be a good idea too probably just add some numbers or I just have a regular stamp but I do have I don't know if you can quite see that another little drawing that I did the other day that I'll probably end up painting with my Daniel Smith watercolors but that turned out well I've managed to get in a couple of layers don't know if you want a closer look at everything But this is the A. Gallo Natural Collection. You know, I could possibly take the white pen and put some little dots and other little highlights here, but I'm quite content with how this turned out. So if you have any comments, suggestions, or questions, just comment below. Thank you for spending the time with me. Have a great day. Bye.